what's up everyone? I'm Nick, this is Swiffle Thinking, and I'm very curious if you guys are liking the music in these videos because every playlist I've been changing up the music and I'm really liking this one. Um, but anyway, in the last video, we created these rows that we can house some of our coin data on. And in this video, we're gonna create a list that's gonna house a bunch of rows. So by the end of this video, we're gonna be able to put a bunch of coins on the screen and we're gonna also add a little bit of animation so that we can navigate between two different lists. One list is gonna hold all of the coin data, just the generic coin data, and then another list is gonna hold all of the coins that are actually in the current user's portfolio. So the code in this video is actually pretty easy, but we're getting ready so that when we actually do download all of this data from the internet, we are ready to just display it on the screen. All right, welcome back everyone. I am back in our Xcode project, of course. In the last video, we set up these rows that we can then put into our view. And here's what the rows look like. And if I open up the simulator quick on our final product, we can see how those rows are gonna look awesome. Uh, but we have not set up this list yet, and that's what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna set up this list so that once we do download data, we have our list ready to actually show that data. And we're gonna also set up the list on the portfolio tab. So on the second tab, we have another list here. And those lists are gonna be managed from a single view model that is for this entire screen. So in this video, we're gonna also start setting up our view model, which is pretty exciting. All right, without further ado, let's jump into the code here. And I'm gonna go into the home view where we have our, right now we just have our home header. And below the home header, let's put in a list, open the brackets. And for right now, let's just add one fake coin. So we'll say coin row view, which we set up in the last video. For the coin, we're going to call developer preview dot instance dot coin. That's our preview coin. We got to be careful not to use this in our production app, but for developing right now, it's okay. And then show hold holdings column, I'll put to false. It's not on this first screen. So we have it. And obviously this list looks a little funky. So let's change the style. We'll call dot list style. We'll say plain list style. And that looks a little bit better. But now we are using MVVM architecture, of course, which is definitely my favorite architecture with Swift UI. And what that means is that all the data that is behind this screen needs to be in a view model and not on the view. So the view is handling all of the actual UI, but the data that is behind this view, so all of the coins for this list, need to be managed in the view model. So we don't have a view model yet in our app and it is time to create one. So let's right click on this view models folder within the home tab. Let's create a new file and we're gonna make it a Swift file. And let's call this home view model. Go ahead and click create. When we're inside, let's create a class and it will be called, you guessed it, home view model. We're gonna make it conform to observable object and we'll open the brackets. And remember we're conforming to observable object so that we can observe it from our view. And before we even do anything in this view model, let's get it set up and add an instance of this view model to our app. So we wanna reference it in the home view so we could create it right here within the home view but we're also going to want to reference it in a whole bunch of other views in our in our app because as we move around this app as you'll see uh, most of the screens in this app correlate to the same data source so they all have the same list of coins that they deviate from and because of that we're going to share this view model across a lot of the views that we make in our app because we are sharing it across several views Instead of passing it from view to view with an observable object, we're gonna instead put it in the environment as an environment object. And if you don't know what any of this is that I'm talking about, if you don't know what an observable or an environment object is, I highly recommend going checking out my SwiftUI bootcamp course where I cover all of this in detail. And because I've covered this in detail, I'm just gonna throw it into this app and assume you guys do understand how it works. So what we're gonna do is in our app.swift file, our, which is the first file in our entire application, remember this is where your app starts. It has the app main call, and as soon as the app loads, it's going to jump into this window group here. 
which actually has a navigation view and a home view. And we want to add an environment object to this entire navigation view. So at the top here, we're going to create an at state object var. We'll call it VM for view model and we'll set it equal to the home view model, open close parentheses. And we can use the state object here because the home view model, we made it observable object so that our views can observe it. And now our views are going to observe this state object. And on the navigation view, we're going to add an environment object and we'll pass in our VM. So now that we have this environment object on the navigation view, all of the children views of this navigation view. So pretty much anything that is in the home view or a child of the home view has access to this view model, which is awesome. And let's actually make this private before we leave because we're only going to access it within this within this struct here. We're not going to access it anywhere else. And now that we have it in the environment, we can jump into our home view and we can just pull it out of the environment. So in the home view, we'll add an at environment object, private var, we'll call it VM, and it will be of type home view model. All right, and then as soon as we add this, our preview is going to crash. And that's because the preview doesn't have a reference to an environment object. So we need to explicitly add an environment object to our preview environment down here. So on here, we're going to call dot environment object. And we need to pass in an observable object here. And again, we could start initializing uh, new home view models every time we need to. But instead, we're going to do what we did with the coin model. So if we looked at the coin row view, we called dev dot coin. And here I want to be able to call dev dot uh, view model. So I'm going to jump into the preview provider. This is our extension class where we added this dev variable. And then we have our developer preview where we have, and in here we have our coin, which we're using in a bunch of our previews. But we're also going to add, we're going to say let home VM. And we'll set this equal to a home view model. All right, so now we can just access the dev.homevm instead. So jumping back into our uh, home view down here, let's call dev.homevm. And now we have one, and now we have that same instance that we're going to use for all of our previews, which is super efficient. All right, you might need to clean and rebuild so that it all connects, but it should be working. Get that green circle. And uh, now that we have our view model, we can reference it and we can do some cool stuff with the data in our view model. So I'm going to uh, jump into the view model here, home view model. And I'm going to click the plus on the right side to add an editor to Xcode. And while I'm clicked on the right side, I'm going to open up the home view. And let's actually close the canvas over here. So I have the code for my view here. And then this view model is the code that's here. So the first thing I'm going to do is create an at published var. We're going to call this all coins of type. And it's going to be an array of coin model. And we'll set it equal to a blank array to start. We're also going to create an at published var. We'll say portfolio coins. It will be type array of coin model. We'll set it equal to a blank array as well. So this will be the first that first tab on our screen, and this will be our portfolio, that second tab on our screen. All right, and we haven't downloaded any data from the internet yet, of course, but right now let's just create an init. All right, and now obviously we don't have any data to put into these arrays, but we're just going to add uh, one fake coin to both of these, and we're going to do it like we're simulating, like we're downloading from the internet. So let's call it a dispatch queue dot main dot async after and the deadline will be dot now plus two seconds this is just a two second delay click enter on the execute and in this async closure we're going to call self dot all coins dot append and we're going to append our preview coin which is the developer preview dot instance dot coin i'm going to copy and paste that and in the second one we're just going to change it to portfolio coins so now after two seconds, we should have one coin in both of these arrays. 
So I'm going to jump into our home view now. I'm going to click resume just to make sure we're still connected. It should have our preview coin already in here. But instead of just putting one coin here, let's access that data array. So we'll call uh, for each. Use the data completion here. We're going to loop on the vm.allcoins. The content will hit enter, and this will be for each coin. The row is going to be a coin row view. The coin, of course, is going to be our coin, and show holdings column is going to be false in this first list. So after two seconds, the coin should now show up. And you might have to clean and rebuild here, um, but if I press play, it should come two seconds, and then our coin should show up. And that's great. And now I want to add a little bit of animation so that if I click this button and it goes to our portfolio, the all coins pushes to the left and then our portfolio coins comes in from the right. So in this list, let's add a little bit of animation. We'll say if uh, not show portfolio, open the brackets. So if uh, this variable is false, so if it's not show portfolio, which is the starting state, then we want to put this list on the screen. So I'll cut it and put it into this. Let's add a transition onto this so that it transitions when it is being drawn onto or off of the screen. So I'll add a transition, we'll call dot move dot leading. So it transitions to the left edge. And if I click the button now, we should get the animation that goes off the leading edge and it should come back on. So this is pretty cool animation with really not a lot of lines of code and this is the power of swift ui here we can see our titles our eyes our buttons changing our titles changing and our and our list is actually pushing off the right the left side of the screen which looks really cool all right while we have this up i noticed that the list has some insets on the edges here that's like there's a little bit of padding on the right and the left here that i want to get rid of so on each of these rows, we can call dot list uh, row insets. And in here, we can initialize new insets. I'm going to use the top leading bottom trailing. And let's set the top to 10, which I think is the default. The leading, let's put down to 0. The bottom, let's do 10. And the trailing, let's do 0. I think it's just going to look a little bit better, a little smaller margins on the edges. Actually, the trailing, let's do 10 as well. That looks better. So while we're here, let's clean this up a little bit. So I'm going to take this list and the list style. I'm not going to take the transition, just the list style and the list. Cut it. Let's go down below our home header. Let's add a private var. Let's say uh, all coins list of type some view and then paste in our list down here. It's all coins list. Let's then put it back up here. And we'll put the transition on that. And separate from this if statement, let's add another if show portfolio, open the brackets. So if we are short showing the portfolio, we then want to add another list. So I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to take our all coins list. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it. This is going to be the portfolio coins list. Here we're going to loop on the vm.portfolio coins. And this time the show holdings column will be true. Everything else will be the same. So up here, let's here add the portfolio coins list. And here we're going to add a transition. We're going to use the opposite. We're going to do move.trailing. All right, I'm going to click try again on the simulator and hopefully we now get another list popping in from the right side. All right, I got my first list and now we have our second list on the right. So this is looking great. This will be our portfolio list. This will be the all coins list looking good. All right, and the last thing I want to do here, if I look at the finished product, we have uh, this little tiny uh, column titles here which we need and we don't have in our app yet. So that's what we're gonna add right now. It's gonna have, say coin on the left, holdings in the middle and price on the right. We're gonna worry about these, this triangle, the chevron and this reload circle later in this course. But right now, let's get those column titles going. So above the list, I'm just gonna add here. Let's add a H stack, open the brackets. In here, first let's add a text that says coin. Then another text that says uh, holdings. 
And then another text that says uh, price. On the H stack, let's add the font of caption. Let's give it a foreground color of color of color dot theme dot secondary text, which should be our gray. And I'm going to add a spacer between the coin and the holdings. And because we did that, let's add some padding on the edges of this of dot horizontal. So this is looking better. And now we just want our holdings to be aligned with the holdings column. So this price column here in our row, if I go into that coin row view, we uh, used a frame with a we used a frame where we had the width, which was the width of the screen divided by 3.5 and alignment trailing. I'm just going to copy that, go back into our home view. I'm just going to paste that on the price section. So it's the exact same width as the column. And now our holdings is kind of lined up with the holdings where they would be. And of course, we only want the holdings column to show up if we are on the portfolio page. So here we'll add if show portfolio and then we'll put the holdings text so right now it's gone but if we go to the portfolio holdings comes back in and then it goes back out which is awesome let's clean this up a little bit i'm going to take this h stack i'm going to cut it scroll down in our code here let's add another private var we'll say uh, column titles of type some view of type some view and then paste in that h stack these column titles i'm going to then just put right above our list and let's click resume make sure we are still connected and cool so we have our column titles coming in we have our list coming through and now i think we are ready to actually start downloading some data from the internet all right, guys, stay excited because we're getting into some of the cool stuff now. So thank you for watching. As always, I'm Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.